In this video, I want to talk about business versus the stock market versus investing in cash flow rich real estate. If you want to know more about this, which is a better investment, check this video out. Hi everyone, this is Marvin Germo, and if you're new to this channel, Please subscribe and smash that bell so you get updated every time I come up with new content about investing, about a stock market, about business, all with one goal. There's one singular goal on why I created this channel. I want to help more Filipinos be financially free because investing should not be as hard as what most people think it is, that you can do it wherever you are in life and whatever your profession is. You just need to take the time to actually learn and build it as a skill. So what are you waiting for? Enjoy the rest of this video and don't forget to subscribe. Hey guys, so I'm still in this phase where I'm answering the questions that you guys have sent out via social media. As you all know, I love answering your questions. I love uh, looking through the comment section and taking time to uh, see the things that you would want as well. So keep on sending them, keep on putting your comments down below and I'll try to make videos off of that, especially if I know that it's something that will give a lot of value to people who are watching. So for this video, I'm making this uh, video based on a question sent by Joshua James Villegas. As you all know, I'm going to put uh, the, the graphic here to see for you guys to see the entire question. But this is how his question would go. Sir Marvin, I need advice. I am a seafarer. Kudos to all of you guys who are seafarers, by the way. One of the things, one of the reasons why I make videos like this also is that uh, I've noticed that seafarers, not just OFWs, but seafarers spend a lot of money. And as you all know, seafarers, they're known for uh, being one day millionaires. They earn a lot of money in in the ships. They earn a lot of money doing what they're doing. Some of it is, majority of it is tax-free. And when they come home, they normally spend a lot of money, especially the ones that are ranked higher already, meaning uh, they're captain or they have a position in, in the ship. They earn a lot of money. And the heart of all of this is so that uh, you don't spend a lot, that you also get to save for your future. And it's nice to see more seafarers that I've seen over the past few years uh, do better in managing their money. Because here's the thing, it's not just about managing money, it's also a, it's not just about investing money, it's how you manage your money well. I'm getting ahead of myself already, but anyway. I bought real estate, good for you, uh, in cash in 2017 for less than 3 million pesos. Now, the at, now at six, now it's not, now priced at 6 million pesos. So basically, he bought a real estate from 3 million, it has already doubled to 6 million pesos. Currently, I'm getting rent. But income is just below 150,000 pesos a year. Should I put the 6 million pesos on business or put it in dividend stocks? I think I will earn more cash flow. Is this a good idea, Sir Marvin? Thank you. I hope someday to be featured in your success stories. Guess what? You don't even have to wait to be featured in the success stories because you're part of the vlog. Yeah. So, anyways, I like seeing more and more questions like this. The more specific your questions, guys, uh, the better it will be. So just put it. Not not the general questions. San po maganda maginvest? Ano po magandang investment? Ano po magandang stocks? Yung pwede I, That's that's nice and cool also. But it's nice to have something like this very situational that I know a lot of people also would like to know the answer to. So first of all, uh, kudos to you. You bought a property that's now double in price. Uh, one of your issues is that. You're just getting 150,000 pesos uh, a year in rent. But if you try to analyze it, you place 3 million pesos. You are getting 150,000 pesos a, a year on rent. That's roughly 5% of, of what, you, what, what amount you place. One thing that I'd like you to revisit though is, and I don't have as much details, you have to check also maybe since the property prices have gone up from 3 million to 6 million, maybe it's time also for you to raise your rent. Meaning, if it if before your price of buying it was three million, and then your rent was one hundred fifty thousand, maybe you should also increase it proportional to the values in that area. So my suggestion is, you check the land land prop land properties, the rental rates in that area. See if your rate is something that's close uh, to the normal rate in that area. If it's if if one hundred fifty thousand pesos a year is close, then maybe you don't uh, maybe you don't need to raise your rates as well. Or if it's too far already, maybe it's time already for you to raise your rates. That's one. Second is basically this: you're asking 
you're asking should you put the money and uh, start a business or put it in the stock market. Here's what I'd like to tell you. And I've been saying this in all of the videos that I've been creating. You invest based on what your skill set is. You invest based on what you are good at. You invest based on what you know will yield a return for you. If you have a track record already, you have a business already that's working for you, you have a business already that's making money for you, then it will be a logical set also to put the money there. If you are if you're already good in the stock market, meaning you are beating the index, you are beating uh, the market in terms of returns, maybe it would be better also to put the money in the stock market for you. But let me tell you this, putting in 3 million, Earning 150,000, getting a capital appreciation of 100%, uh, doubling doubling your money. If you even just look at the rental income, that gave you 5%. The market last year, in general, majority of the mutual funds were negative, were down. So that means your property beat out mutual funds. Property investing, the yields that you got from from the rental property, from the rental income beat a lot of the mutual funds, beat the broad market in general, beat the PSEI. So that's something to think about as well. Where will you get that return? So my suggestion is this. If you don't have a business idea yet, or not just a business idea, you don't have a track record yet of business, meaning you will put that amount of money into something that's fresh, into something that's new, into something that's not yet proven, it might be better to leave it in real estate because their real estate, you're already making money from it. It doesn't make sense to remove something that's making money, to transfer it into something that's not making money yet, or at least doesn't have a tra track record yet. But my suggestion though is this. If you really want to get into business, you really want to get into, into the stock market, leave your real estate so that it still stays as an asset for you. And since you are employed, since you are still a seafarer, you have your salary from that day. Tipisin mo muna, tipirin mo muna yung salary mo. Use a portion of that salary, use that salary and invest that in the stock market. The biggest advantage of the stock market is this. You don't need 3 million pesos. You don't need 6 million pesos to start investing in the market. You can start wherever you are. You can start with 100,000. You can start with even less than that. So, leave that asset. Let that asset appreciate for you, especially property prices now are increasing. I don't know where the area is. You didn't disclose where the area is. But that could be already an asset for you that could grow. Number two, that's giving you cash flow already. It's not a problem. It's not a headache. Then just use uh, whatever part of your salary that you have to invest. So my suggestion is this also. You research now. If you don't have a business yet, Use a portion of your salary to start researching, spending time to build what business will work for you. Build Then, if you already found it, for example, hmm, I want to sell this. I want to do this. Don't scale it up. Don't spend millions. For example, you want to uh, start your own ramen shop. You want to build your own uh, ramen bar. You want to have your own restaurant. Do not spend 2 million, 3 million pesos yet building it. Try to start small. Try to probably cater it first to a few couple of friends. Mag magluto ka muna during birthdays and see kung meron mag-order. Find their feedback. Kasi guess what? I keep on saying this. If your friends don't ask for more, tapos libre siya, that means your product is not good. But, at the, by, but if you fail at that level and they don't like it, your exposure is very, very small. You did not build a stall. You did not hire a lot of people, you don't have an accountant yet, and if it fails, it allows you to pivot. Hmm, ramen is not working for me, I'll try salad, I'll try burgers, or ramen is, the ramen is not good, I still like ramen, I'll just change my formula, just change my menu, and that's how you, that's how you do it, that's how you start small. Then, as it starts getting better, you see, hey, this is gaining traction, I'm starting to make more money off of this, more people are getting orders, more of my friends want this, then that's when you start trying to see how much capital you need. So while that's happening, please remember this, your money is growing. Habang, habang nag-business ka, nagtatrabaho ko pa rin, nag ka na ng pera para sa business. But your money is growing with your skill and your experience. The same way in the stock market, it should be like that. Meaning, when you have money already to put into the stock market, the, the, the only time you put in more, the only time you start scaling it is when you see that, hey, I'm actually good at this. I'm actually beating mutual funds. I'm actually beating the PSEI. The returns that I'm getting here is actually beating the 5% that I'm getting from rental income. So once you start seeing that and you see the potential that you have a track record already that it's starting to earn for you, that's where you start putting more. The key to all of this is do not rush it. You're still very, very young. You're very, very young. But based on what you told me, you're way ahead already of a large part of the population. 
comment below if you believe this for all of you guys watching this that he's already way ahead he already has a property that's giving him cash flow aside from his his job as well he you're not in credit card debt you, you don't have any large loans that you need to pay out you already have the right mindset all you need to act, deploy right now is patience do not hurry do not rush do not put everything one go because you want to hit it big do not rush a lot of people have told me this when i was starting out and i will give this advice to you as well do not rush be patient patience always wins i'll repeat it patience always wins you don't have to rush it every time the fastest way to get rich is to do it slow the fastest way to, way to get rich is to do it right so my suggestion based on your question maintain the real estate again but depends on your competence allow that to have cash flow for you build your stock portfolio and your business based on the money that you have right now based on the extra savings that you have right now so that even though it goes to zero you're not losing millions you're not losing a very very large amount of money you're just losing a very very small amount of money that you don't plan to touch for a very very long period of time and that's what i want you to get i hope that this helps you if there's any follow-up question that you have from this just comment them below or just send it to me as well and i'm gonna make another follow-up video if you guys also have have questions based on this video or you want me to teach you anything else based on all of this comment them below and I'll, I'm gonna make videos like this for all of you guys as well so I guess that's it I have seminars all of the links are down below for where I will be Taiwan however Taiwan there's a travel ban so we're gonna see how that works then Manila March April London May uh, Singapore June uh, we're having Auckland, July we're having Sydney, then November we're having Tokyo and Dubai. For those who want to learn online, I have links to my online seminars below also. They're all in the description for those who want to be part and want to join it. But for what? For those who want to read, want to learn via books, I have links below also where you can order my books via Shopee. So I guess that's it. I hope this answered your question and to those of you guys who have that question as well. Please remember, it's not a question whether what's better, the stock market, real estate, or business all three will work all three are amazing all three will crush it all three will do very 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 well in terms of earning for you over a long period of time but the name of the game here is you have to find where are you good at where is a track where based on your experience where have you seen you get the most success and what's something that you actually enjoy don't just do it because you'll actually make money do it because it's something that you can do over and over and over again and you're having fun so that's why i've been saying start businesses that you like start businesses that are in line with your passion because if you do what you love you'll never work a single day in your life so i guess that's it for now this is marvin germo and i hope this video helps you trade well trade strong trade smart see you all again soon guys and god bless you all